Chapter 3 Ellera had tried everything she could, but her face was still sore and puffy, and she knew from another time passing a mirror that it looked terrible. She groaned hopelessly. Why did she have to go and hit a wall? If she'd just aimed a little better, she would be fine. She'd made it high enough. And now she looked terrible, and didn't know how she was going to cover it up before the evening. She'd tried what she could, holding cold things gently to her face, and surely Azar's magic had helped too, but it hadn't done nearly enough. Finally, she just decided to hope desperately that Asha wouldn't mention it and work on getting some dinner for them both. And maybe it would work in her favor a little. The cook might pity her and be willing to make something, or at least let her make something. The kitchen wasn't quite bustling yet. The rush to make dinner would begin in perhaps an hour, but the cook was still there, as well as two assistants. Ellera knocked lightly on the side of the open door. The cook turned and dropped the bunch of herbs she'd been holding, shock and horror plain on her face. "'Good heavens! What's happened to you?' Ellera opened her mouth to speak, but the cook grabbed her wrist, pulling her into the kitchen, setting her on a stool. "'Dear, this is awful!' the cook said softly, inspecting Ellera's face. "'I'll make you a poultice. Go on now, you can tell me.' Ellera felt oddly hesitant. The cook's sudden intensity directed towards helping her was a bit overwhelming, especially when she thought the cook disliked her. I was... well, some students were chasing me. They what? The cook interrupted loudly, faced away from Ellera and pulling things out of a cabinet. Don't tell me they hurt you. Any student, I don't care how much tuition they pay, if they would hurt one of the staff like that, they ought to be expelled. No, they didn't. I mean, I was concerned they might, but that isn't what happened. Ellera looked down at her hands in her lap, a bit embarrassed to admit she'd run into the wall on her own. The cook laid out several root vegetables on the counter, cutting and crushing quickly. Then what did happen? Well, you know the staircase the professors use sometimes? Ellera asked. Magic one. I know it. Uncanny thing. The cook shook her head, still focused on turning the vegetables nearly to paste. I tried to jump up to the hallway to get away, and I missed. The cook turned to look at her, a half-sympathetic, half-judgmental grimace on her face. Even with wings, that's a gamble to jump to. Ellera nodded, looking down into her lap again. The cook scraped a chunky paste of vegetables off the cutting board and into a small pot and hung it over the fire. Still, it seems you made it away from whatever mischief the students had planned. Ellera nodded again. The cook stirred the pot quickly, frowning at it intently. It began to smell strongly of onions. Barely a minute later, she took it off the fire and poured it into a cheesecloth, tying it into a bag. Hold this to your face, dear. It'll help the color lighten. It might have been better if you'd come to me sooner, but it'll still help. Her tone was somewhere between caring and scolding. It felt almost motherly, which was a very strange feeling. Ellera did as she said, the soft bag pleasantly warm, though pungent. She realized then that she would be going to meet Asha, not only with her face all mottled, but also smelling like onions. For the cook's sake, she forced herself not to grimace, but the thought was nearly painful. Now what was it you came for? the cook asked. I'd intended to have a picnic this evening, Ellera said, and I still like to try... I wanted to ask you if you could help me with making food. The cook winced, looking at her face. I'm guessing the plan was to meet someone? Ellera nodded slowly, the woman's pity making her own chest feel heavier. Perhaps you ought to ask them to meet another day, or send a messenger to ask for you, the cook suggested, in a gentler tone than Ellera had thought her capable of. I don't want to miss it, Ellera said hesitantly blinking as she began to tear up. She really didn't want to miss it, but it felt almost like it was ruined already. The cook sighed. I can understand you. I was young too once. I'd still suggest you try to put it off, but if you're determined, I'll help you with the food. Ellera smiled gratefully, her chin dimpling. Thank you. The cook gave her a half smile that was more pitying than anything else. Once that cools completely, it'll have done what it could. Ellera nodded, shifting the bag up a bit and trying to blink away the tears that were threatening to spill. So why were the students chasing you? One of the cook's assistants asked. 
While Ellera started over the story, telling all the details, the cook made her up a basket of some extremely tasty-looking food. Small sandwiches and little containers of cold salads, some fruit and cheese. Ellera watched with increasingly wide eyes as the cook kept adding to the basket. It was far more than she had even hoped for. She doubted that she and Asha would even be able to eat it all. All right, here you are, the cook said, unmistakably proud, holding the basket out to Ellera. I hope you have a good evening, and that this person is worth every bit of this basket. Thank you so much, Ellera said, reaching out for the basket. But the cook pulled it back suddenly. You can have it, if you promise me that if this person you're meeting is anything other than kind to you, you'll walk away and keep it all for your own self. Ellera blinked. She'd never had anyone be protective over her this way and was surprised now. The cook probably didn't even know her name. She certainly didn't know the cook's name. And here she'd been so kind to her. Yes, I promise. The cook nodded firmly, handing her the basket. Then go off and have fun. I'll need the space in here. It's almost time to make dinner. Ellera nodded quickly and scurried off with her basket, still marveling at the whole experience. She wondered if it was too early to go on outside. Thanks to the students, she didn't have any more library work, and not much else to do before the picnic. Well, perhaps if she went out early, the breeze might blow away some of the stink of the poultice, and she could at least try to wash it off. There was a trickling little stream that meandered around the school property, and near a bend of it would be a pleasant place to picnic. She was getting nervous the more she thought about it, a heavy rock settling in her stomach. What if she showed up and Asha laughed at her? or was disgusted by the smell and couldn't stand to stay, or she stayed for the picnic but then just quietly avoided her. What if it had all been politeness so far, and after this Asha felt like she'd met the need to be social and didn't really care for Ellera at all? She couldn't know, she tried to tell herself, but she shouldn't think bad things of Asha. She should try to be optimistic and hope for the best. She pushed all the nervous thoughts aside, going outside and heading straight for the bend in the stream, She set the basket down and washed her face and neck, trying to clean everywhere the poultice had touched. There was a small, smooth bit of water where a rock blocked it from flowing down, and she tried to see her reflection. The bruise looked... not as bad. She was rather bedraggled looking, though, with her damp hair. Being a bit feathery, it looked even stranger wet than it normally did, plastered together and limp. Ellera tried to dry and fluff her hair again, letting out an almost tearful sigh. Everything she'd tried to look a little more presentable had made something else worse. And she was already... She took in a deep, calming breath. No, she wouldn't think that way. Her wings and hair and everything were all a blessing, and she loved them. She was beautiful, even if today wasn't the best for showing it. Ellera! Ellera looked up to see Asha in the distance, holding a wide pan of plants against her hip with one hand and waving enthusiastically with the other. Ellera waved back. I'll be done soon, Asha yelled, turning away and walking toward the greenhouse. Ellera couldn't help but smile, her fears and worries melting away at the clear excitement from Asha. It was going to be fine. She laid down in the grass, looking up at the soft clouds, parting to let the yellow, almost sunset light through. Another wave of tiredness hit her, making her eyelids drift shut. In some ways, today had seemed so short, but in other ways it seemed very long, and it was certainly eventful. Now, laying in the soft clover by the stream, warmed by some of the last rays of the sun, and without an annoying cat clawing her, she felt at peace, able to sink into the warmth. Ellora, your face, a soft, gentle, worried voice said. Ellera opened her eyes to see Asha bent over her, intensely concerned. "'I'm all right. I've had it tended to,' Ellera said, a bit mumbly and groggy. The sky was red now, not yellow anymore. How long had she slept? Asha slowly reached out, brushing her fingertips over Ellera's cheek. Her gentle touch tingled against Ellera's skin, and she felt heat rush to her cheeks. "'What happened?' Asha asked, still clearly concerned. Ellera blushed even more, suddenly embarrassed. I flew into a wall. But Asha didn't laugh. She brushed Ellera's hair back so she could see her forehead. I know you said it's been tended already, but can I help some? 
Ellera nodded, her words all but taken away at the gentle care. Asha opened up one of several pouches on her waist. She laughed slightly. I suppose it's a good thing I didn't stop to change out of my work clothes. Ellera pulled out a few leaves and a small purple flower. From another pouch, she got two palm-sized stones, one with a shallow divot in the middle. Ellera pushed herself up into a sitting position to watch. Asha put the leaves and the flower in the divot and then rubbed the two rocks together, frequently pausing to readjust the plants with a finger, and kept grinding until it was a paste. It smelled sharp and a bit earthy. It won't be quite as good as it could be, Asha said. I haven't learned enough yet about pulling the magic from the plants, so it's just their natural properties, but it should still help. Ellera nodded quickly, practically in awe. I'm sure it'll be very helpful. Asha smiled at her. Even with the residual sadness and concern in her face, she just looked so bright. The fading red light on her dark skin was just beautiful. Elra felt filled up with a feeling she couldn't name, but it made her feel pleasantly warm and very happy. She closed her eyes as Asha dabbed the paste gently onto the bruise. Asha was so gentle it didn't hurt at all, just sent tingles running through her. Maybe she was actually glad that she'd run into the wall. Asha pulled her hand away, and it felt over and yet not over, because Ellera got to open her eyes and see her again. "'I brought food!' Ellera blurted out suddenly, feeling her cheeks heat even more with the outburst. Asha smiled brightly. "'I'd love to try it.' Asha stood up, wiping her hand and her stones on her apron, and then shook out a folded blanket that she must have brought and set on the ground next to the basket. "'I didn't make it,' Ellera said quickly, somehow taken over by the impulse to babble whatever came into her mind." I asked the cook to make it for me. Asha smiled, sitting on the blanket while Ellera unpacked the basket. It looks lovely. The cook must be a very generous person. She is, Ellera said, sitting next to Asha and opening the containers. They ate in silence for a bit, watching the sun finally slip behind the distant mountains. Were you able to finish your project? Asha asked, turning to look at Ellera. My, oh, the harp. Not quite, actually, though I'm very close. Oh, it's a harp? Ellera nodded. It's... Well, I wanted to finish it and show you first, but I ended up sidetracked today. Would you want to hear about it, even if you can't see it yet? She felt she could trust Asha not to tell anyone, if she knew it was a secret. Asha nodded eagerly. Yes, I'd love to. Ellera grinned, excited to finally tell someone. Oh, but you can't tell anyone else. It's still a bit of a secret, just because... Well, I'm not really supposed to mess with magical things. I don't really have training, but I do know what I'm doing. I've researched it a lot. Asha nodded, her face becoming just a bit grim. And if I keep it a secret, nothing's going to happen that could hurt anyone, right? Elora shook her head firmly. No, this can't hurt anyone. All right. Then yes, I would enjoy hearing. Her smile returned, and she shifted to fully face Elora. Elora grinned again. So it starts with, well... Me, kind of. I think I'd have to explain about what happened to me first for you to understand. Asha frowned slightly, more in thought than anything else, and nodded. Um, so... Ellera realized she'd never really told anyone this particular story. Not anyone that wasn't involved or already knew something about it. It felt rather private. But it was here, in the dark, with only Asha. And she trusted Asha already. Perhaps she shouldn't, but she did. Well, when I was young, um, Asha set a hand over hers. You don't have to tell me if it's a sensitive subject. I'm fine if you just begin with, for reasons I can't explain, I was doing this. Ellera felt as if she might tear up. Asha was such a sweet person. No, I want to. It's just a little complicated, knowing where to start. But I do want to tell you, because we... We're friends... Asha very suddenly hugged her, and just as quickly let go. Oh, sorry, I just... You've been so friendly to me, and I've barely known you a day or two, but I shouldn't have just... Ellera hugged Asha back, suddenly filled with conviction. We're friends, she said firmly, though there was a piece at the back of her mind that said no. But not less than friends. More than friends. Or at least, a hope for more than friends. They both held on this time, finding something together they hadn't had in a long, long time. Asha was so nice to hug, Ellera thought. 
She was round and soft, and it just felt so warm and safe and right. Suddenly there was a very loud and obvious gasp. Ellera turned to see Millie, staring at them open-mouthed. Ellera, you've finally found someone! Ellera knew that Millie certainly wasn't thinking friends. Millie didn't have anyone courting her ever since the boy she'd liked had gone traveling, and because of that she was determined to see romance everywhere it could be found, and many places where it could not. Asha seemed to understand this, even without knowing those details. She let go of Ellera and spoke clearly and firmly, though not unkindly. You are being rather intrusive. Millie gasped again. Oh, I am. Sorry. She ran off, but Ellera knew that the rumors would certainly be spread. Asha looked like she was holding herself in. She looked at her lap and nodded Ellera, seeming rather shy for the first time since they'd met. Friends, right? she asked quietly. I... It's nothing against you. I promise you're lovely, but I don't... She looked up, firmness set in her eyes again. I don't like people that way, and I don't think I ever will. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up in vain. Ellera nodded very seriously. I understand. It felt a bit... She'd expected to feel disappointed, but she didn't somehow. I think... Well, Millie gossips a lot. It may start a rumor, but I don't expect anything from you. This evening has been amazing. If you're comfortable with friends like we have been just now, I'm very happy with that. Asha nodded firmly, and then let out a kind of wheezing laugh, deflating and laying down on the blanket. Sorry, I think I took that too seriously, but I really don't want to have people upset at me for things I can't control. Ellera reached out this time to put a hand over Asha's. No, I'm glad you told me clearly. I like knowing where we're going. She offered a small smile. Asha smiled back. There was a pleasant silence for a few minutes, just the sounds of crickets starting up their nighttime noises and the soft babbling of the little stream. It was still warm and pleasant, and the moon could now be seen peeking through the branches of the big tree that shaded one corner of the greenhouse. Would you still want to tell your story? Asha asked. Ellera laid down, looking up at the few stars beginning to appear, trying to think of how to start it again. Well, you know how some of the professors here have familiars? I've heard of it, Asha said. Most familiars are or were magical to begin with. It works best for circulating the magic somehow. I've heard some people say that the cat Azar has used to be a fairy. There was a soft rustle as Asha nodded. But it's hard to catch a magical creature, even harder to turn them into a familiar. So, when I was younger, a witch thought it would be easier to use a human. Easier than catching something magical, and much better than using an animal. According to her, I've always had a spark of magic in me. Ellera shrugged. I'd certainly never felt it. But when it was a hard time for our family, she didn't even tell my parents what the potion would do, just paid them to make me drink it. And it didn't work, not completely, or else I'd be an owl. A heaviness grew in her chest as she spoke about it, but not as heavy as it used to be. It was as if telling the story unwound some of the pain of it. My parents were horrified, and my dad took me and ran away, but the part of the magic that did work properly made a bond between me and her, and I kept running back when she called me, even though I hated it. Asha took her hand and silently squeezed it. Ellera squeezed back. They had to send me away up here, because the school's protective wards blocked the bond between us, and she isn't allowed in. A knot came up in her throat. I miss them. Ellera was silent a moment, and then pressed on with the much lighter and easier part of her story. But ever since then, I can feel if something's magical if I touch it. Ellera gestured at the stream beside them. And I was walking along this little stream, but farther up, close to the edge of the school property, and I saw something in the water. I was curious, and I pulled it out, but I would have dropped it right back in if I hadn't felt the magic in it. It was a bone. A collarbone, I think, but not the same as a human's. And it just... Ellera waved her free hand, trying to find the right words. It wants. I still don't know what exactly, but I researched a long time, and I found an old story of a harp made from a bone that told the story of the person's death when it was played. And this bone just wanted so badly, and I could feel it, so I started trying to figure it out. Ellera chuckled lightly in remembrance. The hardest part was making the rest of the harp, not the strings. 
I've only been working on strings for a few weeks, but it took months of trying to find out what it wanted the rest of the harp to be made out of. I finally found some wood that worked, and it turned out it used to be a baby cradle, but the cradle had broken and they couldn't fix it, so they were just selling the wood. And then the pins to hold the strings weren't so hard, but I think it already knew that it wanted the strings to be made of hair, because every pin had to have been a hairpin at one time, and just like the hair, they had to be freely given. How did you figure out what it wanted and what it didn't? Asha asked. Mostly through feeling it. I don't know how to explain how it feels, just right or wrong or somewhere like a grudging acceptance. Ellera's mouth quirked up. Or sometimes, especially with the wood I was trying to use at first, it would just fall apart. So then when you finish it and you play it, you think it'll talk? Asha asked, turning her head towards Ellera. Ellera shrugged, staring into the sea of stars. Maybe not talk. I think in the story the harp just didn't make any sound until the bard started playing the song it wanted. What if you can't find the right song? Ellera frowned slightly. I don't know. I think... It's taken time, but I've gotten this far. I think I'll be able to finish. Asha rolled onto her side to fully face Ellera. And then what? Ellera turned her head to meet Asha's gaze. I really don't know. I can't leave here, even if it wants me to. Maybe I'll pass it on to someone who's leaving. Let them continue the quest, in a way. Asha yawned. Perhaps, if it found you here, what it wants is here. I hope so, Ellera said quietly, the longing for something more panging through her. She'd kept it pressed down, sated with the excitement of making the harp but she didn't know what she'd do once the harp was done, especially if she really did give it up. She felt for Asha's hand again, and Asha squeezed gently, rubbing a thumb over her fingers. Maybe she did have the more she'd been looking for already.